What's going on everybody? Welcome to another gameplay video and today is a very special deck. Uh, so this is a historic deck but it's specifically Dana Fisher's Elves beatdown deck that she most recently posted I believe on the 16th. I don't know what today is. 17th. So yesterday um, and uh, it's really really fun. Uh, the reason that this deck uh, is one that I really wanted to play. First of all it's Dana Fisher. If you don't know who Dana Fisher is she's one of the youngest pro players uh, I think ever. Uh, she has always uh, been an elves player so like literally day one she will play an elves deck no matter what uh, and she's very very good she's a very talented player uh, and so I'm really excited to play what she has put together here uh, and this is really based off of Collected Company so uh, if you don't know Collected Company was most recently uh, released in Amonkhet Remastered it's an instant for four mana uh, look at the top six cards of your library put two creature cards with converted mana cost three or less from among them onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom in any order now this obviously lends itself extraordinarily well for an elves list where everything is essentially very very cheap and uh, and they all kind of build on each other. So uh, we've got a lot of lords. So we've got four uh, Elvish Arch Druid, which not only are, is a lord for all of our elves, but you can tap it and add green for each elf you control, which just really, really helps you move forward with the game and just like double up on spells really quickly. Uh, Elvish Chance or Clan Caller, excuse me, uh, is another lord here. Um, it's a one-one for two, not quite as good, but uh, you can pay six, tap it, and then get another Elvish Clan Caller from your deck and just put it onto the battlefield. So uh, this gives you another kind of instant speed interaction along with the Coco uh, to be able to pull out uh, a lord very very quickly. Uh, now. Uh, you may notice, because uh, generally speaking, a lot of these elves deck have something like a Crater Hoof Behemoth, which is obviously legal in uh, an MTG arena, but we're not using that. Uh, we have got a one of Allosaurus Shepherd as our kind of big finisher card. So if, for whatever reason, uh, going super wide and buffing up all of our creatures isn't quite enough, what we get to do is play this guy and use his six mana ability. Uh, until the end of the turn, each elf you control has a base power and toughness of 5-5 five, five and becomes a dinosaur in addition to the other creature types. So essentially this acts as our Crater Hoof Behemoth. This gets to buff everything for six mana uh, by a significant margin, and then we are able to obviously swing in and do, hopefully, the, the winning uh, damage. So this also helps things against a control deck. It's just really, really nice to be able to uh, to keep yourself from being countered. So very, very strong there. Uh, we also have Lanawar Elves here as a ramper along with a one of Paradise Druid, uh, which I think is a little interesting, but I kind of like the include. Uh, we have Pelt Collector as a very good early game kind of beater. Uh, Dwenin's Elite uh, is a 2-2, but if we control another elf, we also get another 1-1 one -one with it. Uh, Elvish Visionary helps us draw cards. Uh, Wildborn Preserver as a 1-of here. It's a Reacher, which is great. It's also a Flash spell, which is also great. Uh, and whenever a non-human uh, creature enters the battlefield under your, your control, you can pay X, and when you do, you put that many 1-1 uh, counters on the Wildborn Preserver. Obviously, that's really, really good, because chances are we're going to have a lot of mana and a lot of creatures coming down, and so this will be uh, getting out of hand very quickly is the idea. Uh, Imperious Perfect, also very good. Three mana, two, two. Uh, and a Lord, other elf creatures you control get plus one, plus one. But uh, it also helps spit out more one ones, uh, which is great. Uh, which obviously with just this out, it's actually two twos. Uh, but ideally, much stronger than that. Uh, and then Steel Leaf Champion is a really good beater for us, so it's a 5-4 for 3, uh, and it can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less, uh, which is kind of ridiculous. This is just, like, insane. Um, but the whole deck is essentially able to be pulled out with Collected Company, and so the idea is you can kind of wait till it's at uh, the most opportune moment, uh, throw out a Collected Company, hopefully get a couple really, really strong things, whether those are Lords, whether that's a Steel Leaf Champion, uh, and then be able to swing in. Most often, we'll probably try and play this at the end of our opponent's turn uh, because then we obviously have a much stronger attack on the backswing but very very strong uh, I have play tested just a little bit um, not a ton but uh, what I found to be my problem area is knowing when to play the elves in our hand and when to play the Coco uh, because I do think that there's a little bit of overlap there but I don't think that that's a problem with the deck I think that's a problem with me and how I'm learning it so I just want to make sure that we do the best we can there uh, we do have 22 lands so we've got 19 forests and three castle Garenbrig pretty straightforward land base we don't need to be overcomplicated there so uh, along with a 
really awesome deck by Dana Fisher. We are still learning Historic a little bit. This is only our third video through Historic, uh, but I am really excited. I have loved playing Historic. It's just a learning curve for me. Um, much different than Standard, obviously. Much bigger card pool, uh, and it's, it's a good time. It's a really fun time. Uh, just different, that's all. Uh... This isn't like an amazingly fast hand. We don't have uh, like a Llanowar Elf, for instance, but we do have nice uh, little Elvish Visionaries here. So let's keep and let's see how this goes. Um, generally speaking, I think you want to have a one mana Elf in your hands. So this is a bit of a test to see how well this does uh, without a one mana Elf. And we'll just kind of see how it goes. Uh, looks like the opponent mulligan down. Can't be too mad about that. Um, this deck is very much a beatdown deck, I will say, uh, and so you'll see most often we will be fairly aggressive, uh, and especially with things like an Elvish Visionary, you can kind of get a little more aggressive with these, because the value in this is that it's already drawn you a card, um, and you theoretically have stronger uh, stuff coming down. Um, I hope you guys all had a fantastic weekend as well. Um, really happy, by the way, we drew that for us. That's fantastic. Two Cocos, that's pretty good. Um, nice, Scabos. Uh, let's go ahead and play Steel Leaf Champion then. Uh, we'll say no attacks. Uh, I really like Steel Leaf Champion against these uh, Goblin decks. Sure. Uh, it just does a great job of holding things off here, so really, really like that. Um... All right, well, we do need to get this out there. Um, and I'm actually gonna attack with both here. We'll see what the opponent wants to do. This is a pretty big hit. I mean, this is almost half of their life. Um, so. But assuming we get to keep the the art steward here, we get to collect a company pretty quickly. And considering we're against goblins, I'm not too worried about doing it on their end step. Uh, that's just a very opportune time to do it generally because obviously you don't have as much mana to worry about, but um, it's really not the biggest deal in the world. Uh, what's what's nice about this is we can do it anytime, so not stressed about that. Um, obviously not going to block. They may have a shock. Oh, they didn't. Okay. Um, well. Uh, yeah, I mean, we collected company, I believe, right? Um... Okay, yes. I'm trying to make sure that we spend the right mana here, because uh, I do think that that's very important, obviously. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Ooh, that was kind of close. Nice. That was beautiful. Uh, and then let's go ahead and play another Dwinin's Elite. Perfect. All right. We'll attack him with these two. And now, as you can see, we just have blockers and things to do for days. Uh, so if they attack in, I'm perfectly happy to block with a few things here, uh, save ourselves that damage, and then make sure that we've got some some good solid backswing. And there we go. We got it. Fantastic. Uh, I am so tired of losing to goblin decks. It's very nice to be able to beat a goblin's deck uh, with something a lot faster. Um, that reminded me also of the JDC stuff, because we did uh, elves versus goblins. That was really fun. Uh, that was a really good time. I enjoyed the JDC. I'm really excited, by the way, to announce that we officially have everybody scheduled for the JDC. Um, and so we will be coming up with some some extra information for you guys very, very soon. Um, some announcement videos, things like that. Uh, really, really stoked about the JDC season four, three, three. Um, <laughs> uh, it's it's really going to be a good time. Um, we got a great lineup as well. We've got some really awesome people. Uh, and so, again, I, I cannot wait to get that stuff out to you guys, and that way you guys can mark it on your calendars and all that kind of stuff. It will be coming back the 21st of September. I can go ahead and tell you that. Uh, that will be a live stream evening. Uh, looks like 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. So we are going to be uh, a little late with that li live stream, but it's going to be, I think, a very, very fun time. So uh, keep that in mind. This is a pretty nice little starting hand. Uh, it's not amazing, but it's got a couple Pelt Collectors here, which is nice. Get an Elvish Visionary down so we can hopefully draw another land. Uh, and then, of course, Steel Leaf Champion being here is going to be great. That's fine. Not the worst thing in the world. Perfect. Uh, let's be mana efficient. Let's play the Visionary. Okay. We could double up on Pelt Collectors at some point if we need to. Uh, looks like Is It Spells is the, is the matchup. 
uh, which is perfectly fine. Uh, let's play Steel Leaf Champion. This is probably just going to eat like a Lava Coil or something along those lines. Um, and maybe I'm thinking too much in standard to say Lava Coil, but it's probably going to eat some spell here. Um, but that is going to take a turn from them. Uh, and then, of course, we get to, to kind of double up next turn on a few things. So that's going to be nice. Uh, this may not have been the best play, only because uh, it's what triggers the the pelt collectors here. But that's okay. Let's do this. Let's do this. And we can flash this out then at any time. We'll do this. Uh, Kiln Fiend's very good and very scary. My assumption is... Um, that they're going to be able to to really, really power this thing up, and then we're going to be in a bad position here. But we're going to do the best we can. Um, they still need to spend some time, I think, removing some threats here. So that's worth noting. Uh, sure. Let's do this. Let's trigger that. Um, whoops. Let's just see what happens. Cool. Get rid of that. Oh, wow. And they just gave up. Uh, I do think in that deck, it is very, very key to get rid of that Kiln Fiend. Um, that devalues most of their deck if they just don't have a backup creature. Uh, and it looks like that was probably what happened there. I think that was a mistake to attack in. Um, but uh, obviously... That's exactly what you need to do against that kind of deck because a lot of what they're looking to do is remove threat, get a Kiln Fiend out first, remove threats with a lot of burns, sorry, hit the mic, uh, and then of course pump it up. Um, and if they don't have the Kiln Fiend, the other stuff kind of doesn't matter, uh, and especially when we're going as fast as we are. Now this is a tricky one because we do have two Lanoir Elves to give us our lands, but we of course only have one land in hand. We're going to try it for science. I like science, so we're going to try it. Um, don't know how great this will be, or if at all, uh, but I do generally like to keep a Lanowar Elf hand, uh, even if it does mean keeping a one-lander. Uh, it just tends to be decent. Hmm. Well, and there you go. Um, that is fantastic. Uh, so let's do this. Let's just develop a good bit here. Um, get some things out. This is obviously a lot for the opponent to answer already. Um, we can Coco. Uh, do we want to Coco though? Or do we just want to kind of start playing some stuff out? Let's, uh, let's do this first. Let's see what we draw. Uh, let's attack in. I'm a little cautious to go too ham, uh, or put too much out against a black deck here. Only because I just don't know what they are able to do. Um, they generally have quite a bit of removal and things like that, and I'm just a little cautious to overcommit. Uh, this is, you know, if we draw a land, we're in decent shape no matter what. Um, yep, and that's what I was worried about. So I'm glad I didn't do too much there. Uh, still wasn't amazing, but, you know, I'm glad we didn't overcommit. <laughs> Um, that could have been very bad. Yeah, these little gifted Aetherborn decks are pretty good. Uh, nice that we get a couple things here. We will, of course, pass. Um, we do really need land. I mean, that's it's pretty crucial. Chances, uh, this is going to be difficult to get around uh, now that they've got Death Touch and Lifelink on the table here. Um, and we're just not getting land, which is ugh, not good. Not good, not good. Uh... We just go wide, though. I mean, that's the best thing we can do. And we pass. Uh, not worth it to attack in when they're going to gain that life back. Uh, so I don't think there's any reason to. Sure. Makes sense. Um, let's see. Land gets us a Steel Leaf Champion, which is quite good. Um, wow. Yeah. That's very good. Um, sure. Please have a land on top. That would be great. If we can get a land, yes. That's all we wanted. Let's get Pelt Collector out. Um, like I said, this is a very difficult deck to get against, uh, though. Uh, this is a... With the sweepers and things like that, you can't overcommit. Um, and unfortunately, we were in a position where we had a good bit out uh, that fed us mana. 
Uh, and so we're a little stuck now, but we'll see. Really? Just to get a land, I suppose. Uh, the good news is they can't really just attack. Um, we're kind of in a position, a good position there. Um, I'm going to pass. Let's see what happens. Um, we'll see what they do. All right, let's collect a company now. That's great. Uh, and I think that's great. So the reason I do this, yeah, there we go. So the reason we did that, uh, first of all, that was our last game. We just got three straight wins. Uh, that's never happened in historic for me. That was great. Um, the reason that happened, or we did it that way, though, is because they are a sweeper focused deck. So if you wait again till the end of their turn, it's the most opportune time. It gets around almost every sweeper uh, that I can think of. Um, and so you're able to, to kind of get out from around that. So that was great. That was perfect. Uh, three straight wins with Dana Fisher's Elves deck. Dana, you did an amazing job. This deck is insane. I absolutely love it. So I'm excited to jump into three more games. We'll, of course, do that very, very soon. So stay tuned for that video. If you enjoyed this one, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below and of course subscribe if you're not already uh we really do appreciate all the support lately i appreciate the support on the thumbnails and the uh the historic videos i know it's a bit of a learning curve so i'm sure for those who play historic regularly it's a it's a bit frustrating i'm sure because i'm i know i'm misplaying a lot but um we're doing okay uh this deck is doing pretty well and it's really fun to get into a different format other than standard uh kind of get out from the the grind a little bit so hope you guys are enjoying it again really appreciate the support and i will see you very soon for part two of Dana Fisher's Elves deck.